Welcome back game design students. In this video we're going to begin to construct the level blueprint that will read the boolean variable, variable we created and run the door animation that we created. So let's get started. Open the level blueprint and then go ahead and dock it and select the collision box that surrounds the door. You can find it in your world outliner here as door trigger. And this is a trigger volume, which can be found in your volumes actor place right here. With that trigger volume selected, go to the key level blueprint that we open, right click, and at the top you'll see add event for door trigger. We need a collision event and we need a begin overlap. And then we might as well go ahead and also add an end overlap because we'll need that too. Now what we need to do is look at the variable and see if it's true or not, the key variable. So we're going to drag off the begin overlap and, and type in cast to third person character. This is where the variable is stored. And the object of that cast is going to be the player character. And we're going to have to do this for the end overlap as well. So go ahead and select both of them. Command C, Command V, or Control C, Control V on a PC to copy and paste them. And let's go ahead and move these two down a little bit, give ourselves some room. And what we need to look at is the on the third person character, we need to get has key. We need to look at what's happening with has key. After we look at this variable, and we can go ahead and copy and paste it because we're going to need it down here as well. After we look at it up here, when we begin overlap, we need to determine whether or not this variable is true. So drag off of here and type in branch. And the branch statement looks at the variable and decides whether it's true or not. Collect the has key boolean variable to the condition for the branch and go ahead and copy and paste it because we're going to have to do the same thing down here. If the, if the uh, variable is true, we need to play the door animation and open the door. To do that, we need a reference to the door animation. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is undock this uh, level blueprint for a moment so we can drag a reference for our matinee animation into the um, into the blueprint. To do that, you need to find it in the world outliner. Here it is, right here. And I always do that. And you need to drag that from the outliner into your blueprint. You can't drag it from the content browser; it won't work. And then redock this, and let's continue on. Okay, so now that we have that reference to our level sequence in here, we can play it if it's true. So drag off of here and type in get sequence player. And that's what we need. And now we can play it. So drag off of this and type in play. And we simply just want play. And then connect it to the true node. And we could also type in a little debug print string here by dragging off of here and typing in print string. And we could type in here, you have opened the door. Now if this condition is false, we need to display the widget that says you need to go find the key. So here, we need to create widget. And the widget we need to create is the notification widget, WG notification 2. And after we create it, we need to add it to the viewport. And its target is the widget. And now that we've done this, we need to make the mouse cursor available so you can click on OK. 
So to do that, we're going to right click and uncheck context sensitive. There we go. And we're going to set show mouse cursor to true. And to do that, we check the box. And then we need to get the player controller. So drag off of here. The target is going to be the player controller. We need to get the player controller. And we are now done with this portion of the begin overlap. Now on the end overlap, what we need to do is reverse the animation. And that is simply just a matter of dragging off of here and typing in play reverse right here, and then connecting this to the true condition. Now if nothing, if it's false here, when we leave the, if we don't have the key and we leave the door, then we don't want to do anything. And we are now done with the door open function. So let's go ahead and highlight all of that, and then hit C to make it a comment. And then we're going to make this door open. And we can make this whatever color we want right here. And the added advantage of this is we can move all this around as a group. So in the next video, we're going to program the key and the door light. And I'll see you then.